Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to part two of this series on iNav. Now in this part, we're gonna be looking at the parts and the software which you need. So number one, what parts do you need and how much do they cost? And number two, the software which you need as well. So let's move on nice and quickly. But before we do that, <laughs> you thought I was gonna speed on in there, didn't you? Right, there is a topic which I need to bring up and that's around flight controller board versions. Now, you may have heard of the NASA 32 board before. Now, especially if you're a quad, quad, quad copter pilot, you've probably been and used them. I know that I've been and used them myself personally but they are based upon the F1 processor and also these boards are getting really old now. Now I added this for a point and my point is very simple which is that I would strongly suggest that you use a F3 or ideally an F4 based flight controller board instead and that's exactly what I'm going to be recommending to you is actually an F4 flight controller board. Now the next level, which are, and these boards are only coming out just now, and I'm recording this in May 2017, which are the F7 boards. Now the boards which I've seen so far, none of them have got OSDs built in, so we're going to rule those out for this series. Now, also make a point, those F7 boards are going to be mildly more expensive than the F4 board, so keep that in the back of your mind. And also a topic which I refuse to get myself dragged into is about clone boards and whether you should go for an original board or a clone board. To be honest, I only care about cheap, so we are going to be looking at clone boards because they are cheaper and generally come with more parts and accessories than what the original boards as, do, as I recently found out with a Omnibus F4 board, which came with no pins and no connectors. Boo. Whereas the clones did. Anyway, let's move on. Right, what parts do I need, or what parts do you need? Number one, you're going to need a flight controller board. Now, the one which I'm going to be suggesting, we'll take a look at those in just a few moments' time, is an F4 flight controller board, so a newer uh, chip uh, which is available to us, and it also has an OSD built in. We, Like I said, we will take a nose at those in just a few moments. That costs around about $25 US. We also need an M8N GPS unit, and that costs $19.99 approximately. Of course, prices go up and down over time. Now, on a practical side, you're gonna need a couple of ex servo extension leads. Uh, you'll most likely need a male-to-male -male server extension lead, so you can take the SBUS or CPPM out of your receiver and then plug it into the board. So that's like an odd lead, which which you may or may not have. Uh, so you will also need a male-to-male -male lead. You will also need a receiver. Now I'm gonna be setting mine up with uh, most likely an XAR receiver. It could be an L9 receiver, uh, whichever one I've got to hand. Anyway, in short, it spits out uh, SBUS, and I'm gonna be using FR Sky with the Tyrannus uh, transmitter. Now obviously you'll need to tweak your transmitter uh, and replace your receiver if you're using Spectrum or a different set of kit. Basically you need a receiver which spit ideally spits out SBUS or PPPM at worst case. Uh, you can well you can use a S, uh, PWM to SBUS converter but to be honest that's not a route which I would suggest hence why I'm only very quickly glazing over it right now. Instead Get yourself, uh, get your hands on a uh, S bus based receiver or receiver which can spit out S bus, which is the input which we need into the flight controller board. You'll also need a micro USB cable. I'm sure you're like me, which can spot one, two, three, and there's probably about four there. A couple of those uh, kicking around your new desk. And you're also going to need a soldering iron and some solder as well. Now, I'll put links to everything which we cover in the video description for you, again, for the software, which we'll cover uh, in a few moments' time. Now, let me just go and get this browser up on your screen for you. Uh, so let's talk about flight controller boards. Now, the one which I'm suggesting for you uh, is the Omnibus F4 Flight Controller V1. Now, this has a F4 chip. Uh, the price on it right now is $25, give or take a few cents. Uh, scrolling down, now, there's only one negative which I can say about this board, but don't worry about that because I've already made you a diagram and you'll find out that in a few moments. 
So it is a clone board. You'll see they've got the USB on the left hand side. Uh, we've got the uh, things for our servos out. Uh, no, sorry, those are inputs and outputs. We've got uh, the connectors here, which are our outputs. Uh, and we also get the pin headers as well, which was missing from my original board. Uh, scrolling down, uh, same view of the board. Uh, we've got a little connector on the side. We'll see that we've got a little back on board. Uh, and scrolling down, now the negative which I said, which is, if we have a quick look, where's the top of the board? There is the top of the board. Now, most annoyingly, is the diagram which Banggood Bang Good give us is with, and you'll see those all these little pin headers on here, so over here on the left hand side and over here on the right hand side, that's actually the pin outs from the bottom side of the board. So trying to work things out for me originally was a royal pain in the rear, but don't worry, later on when we get to the pin up stage, don't panic, I've been and made a image which is actually the inverse of what we got here, so that when you're plugging in from the top of the board, it all makes sense. So that's the only one negative which I can say about this board. Uh, one thing to do point out is that it does have an inbuilt OSD in there and that's fantastic which means that we can configure our on-screen display. So what you see in the goggles for your FPV goggles, well you'll be able to configure that all with inside one application which is the iNav configurator which we'll get onto that in a few moments time and that makes things an awful lot simpler for you. Now you may have another board kicking around, I've got actually got an F3 board here on my desktop uh, but it's going to be a pain in the rear because I'm going to have to use a separate OSD to go along with that and that's going to be 50-50 if it works or not, at least with the OSD integrated into this actual board itself. Uh, it does have a few negatives, you might end up with like Flickr and OSD and things like that, but they're all minor in comparison to just the ease of setup. And that's what we're doing in this series. We're keeping things simple for you because it doesn't need to be complicated, okay? So that's the flight controller board. I'll put a link to that in the video description. You will also need a GPS unit. Now I've used these myself um, for a decent period of time. And they work great. Uh, the point to note on these is that you will need to chop off the wires on the end and solder up your own connectors. Okay, like I said, soldering is the only hard part which I can mention in this entire series is just soldering up a couple of wires, you know, and the pin headers. Uh, that, that's it, okay? Uh, you will need one of these. Now, I do rate these personally. I've used them on my own models over a period of time. They work fantastic. They also work with GLONASS as well, which is the Russian uh, GPS system. So that means that you're normally flying around on anywhere between 13 to 18 satellites. So you always got a nice, good, strong fix. That does cost $20. Uh, we will get to, to money in a few moments time. There's, there's one other thing which I want to point out is that I'm going to add this board in as like a, an appendix to this series. Uh, and the reason why I'm adding this in as an appendix to this series is because this is a different board which I've had great personal success with. Now, it does complicate things slightly. Uh, and when I say by slightly, it means you need to add three extra wires. Uh, and this board is slightly different because it's got a current sensor on board. Now, for me, that's a biggie for a couple of the models which I'm flying because uh, the distance which they fly or the time which they stay in the air. So I want to keep tabs on a flight efficiency. Now I want to make you aware is that I will add this as an appendix to this series later and that, that board, the uh, version two of the board, I will not be covering in the basic setup for iNav. And the reason for that is that I feel that it will overcomplicate matters of, we don't need it. But those of you which are interested in current uh, monitoring, those boards, again, super cheap, what, a dollar more, you know? Uh, and I will add an appendix to them. And again, I'll put links to these items in the video description for you. But the board which I would suggest for you, the board which we will be seeing and setting up during the majority of this series is the V1 Omnibus F4 flight board, uh, flight controller board, dirt cheap, really straightforward to set up. And like I said, the only bone which I can pick with it is that the printed board has got the details on the bottom of the board, which makes it like trying to flick it around. You won't have that problem because I've been and made uh, you uh, literally an image which you could print off if you want to or just follow along in that part of the tutorial later, uh, which I'll point out this is where you should be plugging these things in and it all kind of makes sense. Now, let's get that off the screen. 
So we need a few basic parts. We need a flight controller board. I'm suggesting the V1 because I think that will fit most situations very, very well. And also it's relatively inexpensive, less than $25. We'll also need a GPS unit. We'll need some survey leads, a USB, a um, USB cable, an S-Bus ca compatible receiver, uh, and a solder and iron and some solder because those pin headers, we need to solder them to the board, okay? Next part is what software do you need? And that's really straightforward. So you need three pieces of free software. Now that's a bit of a mouthful, so let's go and get the browser back. Uh, number one, you're gonna need Go uh, Google Chrome. Uh, so if you're not using Chrome yet, uh, on, I'll put a link to this in the video description. The reason why you need Google Chrome is because the iNav configurator, the software tool which you're gonna be using to set up and configure your board, requires uh, Chrome. And of course, remember, Chrome works on both PCs and also a Mac as well. Now, that brings us on nicely to the iNav configurator, some free software. I'll put a link to that in the video description for you. Download that and you'll be able to open that iNav configurator as an app within your Chrome web browser. Again, both of those are free. And our last piece of software which we need uh, and it, unfortunately this is for windows based users apologies i don't know of a mac uh, equivalent uh, which is a tool called impulse rc driver fixer now this one makes it so much easier i've tried using zagged and it's a pain in the rear this one's great because you kind of like run it and it kind of fixes itself now, if you go to their website, again, I'll put a link to that in the video description for you. Scroll down, and so we're up there at the top, so you'll want to scroll down, down and down and down, and then underneath download, there's a section called uh, Impulse RC Driver Fixer EXE. Click on that one and download that as well, because you will be needing that so that it helps the board into bootloader mode so that you can then go and flash iNav on it. So let's move those out of the way. A moment and quickly summarize or recap what we've just been uncovered. Number one, you're going to need an F4 flight controller board. Number two, we need a GPS unit. Number three, we need some assorted parts, kind of stuff which you've probably already got here kicking around. Uh, you, and you're going to need three pieces of software. You most likely got Chrome, the iNav configurator app. Uh, that's free to download and also the driver fixer as well, which makes uh, the getting the board into bootloader mode so we can flash iNav on it a billion times easier. Now I'd also like to add for clarity the links which are in the video description uh, are actually affiliate links, something which I like to keep 100% clear here uh, on the Ragnar Nutsoft channel. If you use any of those links and go on to make a purchase on Banggood, you will be supporting the channel, something which I like to be 100% clear about. I also wanna be clear, just to stress again, I would strongly suggest that you go for the V1 flight controller board. It works fantastically well. I've had great success with that myself. However, I am personally kind of interested in the current sensor piece, but it does complicate wiring a little bit. So my point earlier, go for the V1 board. If you fancy filling, get that into one of your models, get it used to, follow along the rest of this series. And like I said, at the end, I'll add an appendix episode where I'll show you the wiring and also the setup for the current meter uh, and for this board because it's got a different pin out. Uh, by the way, if you just buy the V2 board, uh, then you're gonna want, want to watch the rest of the, the, the series uh, and the stuff which I talk about will be very similar, but the pinouts for the wiring up of the board will be quite different, okay? That's why I'm gonna add an appendix later. I feel both boards are very, very good but we're going with a simpler option. Uh, and by the way, you may be thinking, oh, but I can't see the current uh, on the on-screen display. Well, that's correct. You won't be able to do that with a V1 board, but you will be able to see the pack voltage, which is generally quite a very good indicator on how much flight time you've got left. Because if you're down to 11.1 volts uh, on a 3S battery or 14.2 volts, you should really be thinking about landing. Uh, so. We'll get onto that in a later episode. So anyway, time for me to wrap up. Thank you, Evan, trying to get that off the screen. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this episode. 
We've been missing the parts which we need. Uh, the software is free, you can get those downloaded right now. If you haven't got the parts already, go and get those ordered and I'll catch you in the next episode. And that reminds me, the next episode is the maiden flight of the Skywalker Falcon with the V1 flight controller board, that GPS and iNav installed. And I leave my little whoopsie in there for you. So with that said, from myself, Matt, thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerios.